Guys, what you see here are two old Ford F-Series trucks. And in this video, Case, who is behind the camera, and I will show you why you cannot kill an old Ford truck. If you guys have been watching TFL Classics for a while, you recognize this truck. This is Project Gunsmoke, and it's a 1989 Ford F-350 one-ton with a 7.3-liter diesel, non-turbo, under the hood and a manual trans. This is our ongoing project, which will be sold for charity, so stay tuned to the end of the video. We'll tell you our plan for this truck. All right, let's see what Project Gunsmoke has in store. <laughs> oh yeah, these days you guys are used to turbocharged diesels. Well, this is not it. This is a naturally aspirated 7.3 liter. Diesel engines on heavy duty trucks go together like peanut butter and jelly, right? I would say so, yeah. And it's even better when you get to pair them with manuals. Yes, and this is a 7.3 liter. So if you hear 7.3 liter these days, you might be thinking to a turbocharged diesels of like the 2000s era or a brand new Godzilla V8, which yeah. is a gas engine, but this is not it. This is based on an international harvester motor, right? Yeah, and there was an earlier version of this motor, which was a 6.9, then came this 7.3. And after this motor, there was also a turbo version of this 7.3, which didn't really make a lot more peak power. That turbo was claimed to be more for combating altitude. Yeah. So it was apparently pretty choked in the exhaust, and that's a big part of the reason that it didn't make a whole lot of extra power. But there's a common theme between these two trucks, right? Basically giant motors, kind of overbuilt, yep. and also not very high horsepower, right? This engine, when new, was rated at around 185 horsepower yep. and around 338 pound-feet of torque. By today's standards, that's not, not a lot. lot. But by a truck that's 31 years old and still runs almost like new, that's saying something. Well, and especially if you want a motor like this to go for as long as it has, a big part of that is it being under stress. There's no boost going into it, it's not seeing a whole lot of stress again, so that's a big part of the reason that it can run for so long. This whole truck is essentially a tractor, a street legal tractor. <laughs> Absolutely, and it kind of rides like one too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to fix that. Yes. This particular transmission is a VF542. It's a five speed, although it drives more like a four speed because you start out in second. Granny gear. Yes. Granny gear, yep. which is not something that you would use really when you're normally driving. Unless you're pulling stumps or something. Yeah, or if you need to go up a pretty vertical hill, yes. then it comes in handy. Otherwise, not a whole lot to do. But once again, the clutch is relatively easy. Very. Uh, I mean, you would think it'd be like a dump truck, you know, driving uh, one of those heavy, big transmissions, but no, it's not the case. So it's pretty nice. It's great, and it does have, honestly, a, a good amount of torque. And over here is a truck that we initially purchased as a donor truck to fix Project Gunsmoke, but it turned out to be very, very cool. It's a 1990, F-150 with a straight six gas engine, a 4.9, and also a four-speed automatic behind it. Well, let's open the hoods and actually discuss what makes these trucks very special. You know one sign of a real good, indestructible truck? It's how heavy the hood is. And in this case, okay. Okay, the springs are a little bit tight. Oh yeah. Here it is, the 4.9 liter straight six. Case, let's just discuss for a moment what this engine is all about. A heart of any good truck is the engine, right? Absolutely. So what do we have under here? So this is the 4.9 liter or 300 cubic inch inline six that Ford made from roundabout, if I remember right, 1965 to 1996. So 31 years in production, it was based on a 240 cubic inch motor and this was the version of that motor that was basically used in truck applications and not just for Fords. A lot of these engines actually ended up in heavy duty vehicles like some dump trucks and even a lot of UPS trucks. And a lot of those motors had a high flow exhaust manifold which is very desirable for people who are wanting to get a little bit more out of some of these motors. 
Yeah, and this is the latest uh, electronic fuel injection version of it. Yep. And like you said, 31 years is a long time for any engine to be produced. A very long time. Um, and the power rating uh, varied, right? But this latest version was around 150 horsepower. Would have been around 150 horsepower and 280-ish foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, that's really good torque. Yeah, and especially because most of that torque comes on around about 1600 RPM. So one of the reasons that these were good for commercial applications is that you would get all of that torque so low. Yeah, and what about the transmission? So the transmission that this truck is optioned with is the E4OD transmission, which is actually one of the more heavy-duty options for this, uh, for this truck setup. And so it looks like this truck was optioned to actually do some work. Yeah, and that, that basically means it's a four-speed automatic, yep. right, and overdrive. So yep. the third gear is basically one-to-one -one yep. ratio, and there's an overdrive for a little bit more efficiency at higher speeds. When I drove this truck, though, <laughs> it just wants to run, right? Like yeah. you put it and just drive, and it just starts to take off. <laughs> and it definitely doesn't want to stop once you're going. So there's a story one of the viewers um, commented with on the last video we did with this truck, they said though the Cash for Clunkers program that was about, what, 12 or 14 years ago, uh, they were trying to turn in some of these trucks and destroy these engines, and they couldn't. Yeah, some people had stories that when some of these motors were brought in to the Cash for Clunkers program, what they would do for a lot of the running vehicles that were brought into them was they would put sand in the motor so that it would die yeah. and most vehicles would die after just a couple minutes idling some people have stories of these things running for so long with sand in them that eventually they stopped even trying to kill them because it just wasn't worth the time yeah so when we bought this truck we didn't quite realize what engine it had because we wanted just a solid body absolutely that's on this truck but turns out it's one of the kind of a gem of a truck turns out that this is actually a pretty desirable motor. A lot of people really, really like these things. And it makes sense. It's a cast iron block. It, the compression is between, depending on the model year, between eight and nine to one. So it's low compression, uh, cam in block, and it's gear driven instead of chain or belt driven. Two valves per cylinder push rod motor. So nothing about this motor is very heavily stressed. And that's a big part of the reason that they just go forever. Very cool. Very cool. These days, most manufacturers share, for example, the cab structures between half-ton full-size trucks and heavy-duty trucks. Here we have an F-150, and when you compare this truck against the F-350 heavy-duty truck, the Gunsmoke, most of the body panels, the bed, the fenders, the hood are interchangeable, they're identical. So as time moved on, trucks started to differentiate themselves a little bit more, but back in this era, the body panels were the same and having interchangeable parts is good for manufacturing it's a little bit cheaper to buy better to maintain you can find spare parts and that's how we found this truck we paid about nine hundred dollars for this 1990 f-150 just because it has solid rust-free body so the theme of these trucks is being simple like we said and part of that is body on frame construction Nothing too complicated, no crazy panels that are interconnected in all kinds of crazy ways. This is simple and easy to fix. And underneath that frame we've got nice, stout Dana 60 axles, which is one of the biggest things that we're excited about with this truck, because those are great axles. And solid axles like this are super tough, you can off-road them hard, and they'll, they'll hold up. Now one way that you can tell that our F-150 six-shooter here isn't quite as stout as the F-350 is by the fact that these are five lugs and our F-350 has an eight lug. So obviously more stout axles over there, but the running gear on this truck is still pretty impressive. It's rear wheel drive, so it's probably not gonna be much of a crawler, but this twin I-beam front suspension is a design that a lot of people love to modify for desert racing. Apparently, it's pretty easy to make these a good, solid, strong, long travel suspension setup. It's not as nice as A-arm suspension for driving on road, but it still handles pretty well off-road for a lot of people who want to take a truck like this and make a budget off-roader. Back in the day before push-button starts and remote opens and hands-free, there were two keys. This round one to unlock the door, and the square one to actually start the truck. And this is not just Ford, it was kind of many different manufacturers did very similar things. 
And let's start fire this puppy up. This is the F-150. It still likes to buzz though. A truck that was worth about $900 uh, starts right up like it's brand new. And the idle is okay. There is no rev counter here on this gauge cluster, but why, why do you need a rev counter in the truck? Just put it in gear. You can kind of feel where when it engages and just go. Once again, simplicity is key. Very basic steering column. The hazard switch for the hazard lights is actually on the column. It's kind of a little guy. So that's something that's been improved since then because this is kind of hard to find. A very proper column mounted shifter. That's what I love because it just feels manly and good. And this is a four speed, like we said, here's an overdrive lockout. So if you don't need it, kind of push this button. Uh, this has an aftermarket stereo, Sony, but this is pretty standard. Um, AC controls, heating controls, although this truck no longer has AC. Um, somebody removed it. Both of these trucks have a dual tank setup for fuel. You have a gauge. You have, I'll show you that a little bit later, you have uh, also switched between front tank and rear tank. Um, just basic oil pressure, which when Tommy and Case bought this truck, we didn't have any oil pressure, uh, coolant and battery. Very simple speed, uh, tachometer was an option, so you could get different configurations of your gauge cluster, but this is more of a um, base truck, it's a custom XLT, um, so that's what you get. Here's where you can switch between front and rear fuel tanks, you get decent range, although we haven't tested fuel economy on these trucks. Um, right here you have windshield uh, wipers and wash, and here are the lights control. Very, very simple. You have a foot emergency brake, brake release, but not everything is perfect. Look at the travel on this brake pedal. Ooh, it's about a mile away. So, and we fixed this on gun smoke already. Uh, do we have to fix it again? We might see, maybe Tommy and I can bleed the brakes and that'll help, who knows, it's worth a shot. As far as we understand, this truck started out in Maryland but spent a lot of its life in California, around San Diego area, but this is why we purchased it. No, this is not why. Okay, <laughs> we purchased it because of how solid everything is. Look at this bed, this truck is 30 years old and it just barely has a few scratches. Um, it's just tough, eight foot bed. You can turn this into an overland rig. Uh, you can put a mattress back here, a couple of cabinets. Uh, it already has a topper. I mean, how cool is this? And it could go probably another 30 years with no issue. So like you can see, we've got a pretty similar setup in the interior of Gunsmoke, uh, similar to the F-150. Got the same two keys, one to unlock it and one to actually start it. And when you start this, like with any diesel truck, you need to wait so that the glow plugs get going. Oh, that's a very pleasant sound. And then you fire up the beastly 7.3 liter naturally aspirated diesel. And dude, why did we call it gun smoke? Well, one, because it's got a gun rack, and two, because it throws out a lot of smoke. Yeah, we're not saying these trucks are perfect. One example, this oil leak that's coming from gun smoke. All we're saying is these trucks are very durable. They're built solidly and they're very simple. That's why you cannot kill them. Dude, the whole thing just rocks when you touch the throttle. 
It's a lot of motor, not a lot of power, but a lot of displacement. And the nice thing about this truck, especially with it being manual, is that we actually do have a tack so we can see what we're revving up to. Besides that, pretty similar to the other setup. We've got how much voltage that we're getting out of the battery. We've got our coolant temp. We've got the gauge for both of our tanks. So what happened with our tanks, dude, the duals? Yeah, so the rear tank is leaking, and so we had it drained. We can either pull one of the tanks from the F-150, although from the research that I've done, I don't think that the sender for that would work with this truck. But Dan Atkinson, a good friend of ours, has a tank that we might be able to throw in here, and I think that would be worthwhile. Yeah, and basically we kind of uh, just close that off for now. Exactly. Right, and we're running on one tank. For now, we've just made sure that it's not leaking so that we can get this thing running properly, operating in a way that's gonna be safe, Meanwhile, doing as much cosmetic stuff as we can and working out the details of everything mechanical that this thing is going to need. This F-350 has very similar switches to what are in the F-150. And the nice thing about them is that, again, they are very, very simple. So it's not something that's prone to breaking. They're not sophisticated, not complicated. And if they do break, they wouldn't be hard to fix. Listen to that. That's a real old school buzzer sound. A lot of the cars from this era had these annoying buzzing noises, so it's period correct and it's cool to see. And another even cooler feature that's less annoying from back in this era are these smoker windows. Modern cars don't have these, but this was a great way to get some fresh air without having to have it blow directly on you. This let in some fresh air without it blowing directly on you. It was a really, really nice thing to have, and I don't know why modern cars don't have it anymore. And guys, this is what I really like. This appears to be an original radio. Just base control, very simple. Once again, simplicity, uh, nothing complicated. And yes, you do still have your um, ashtray down here or charger port. Yeah. But no USBs, right? No, no. CarPlay. And no need for it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. This is an old truck. It's it's good without it. All you need is this CB radio right here. 10-4, good buddy. 10-4. And there, here's the five-speed. Again, in terms of actual driving, it's more of a four-speed because first is only something that you're going to use in situations where you need a lot of gearing. But just good to have a manual. Those throws are amazingly long, but cool. Yeah, and compared to a lot of off-roaders, not too bad. Uh, a lot of these old off-roaders have pretty long throws. We yeah. talked about four low. Manly. Of course, this four-wheel drive truck has a manual operated hub for locking and unlocking the front, hubs for four-wheel drive. Once again, simple but you do have to get out of the truck to enable four-wheel drive or go back to two-wheel. Indestructible, right? Well, tell that to this bed. <laughs> That's another story. But I wanna point out one more thing. Uh, this one-ton gun smoke truck uh, has fully floating axles, unlike that F-150. And that also means that it's more durable. So the, uh, the way that the bearings are set up inside this hub uh, just basically lasts longer and carries more weight uh, gross vehicle weight on this truck is about 9,000 pounds and then on the F-150 is 6,250 pounds. So these trucks can still carry a lot of payload. When these trucks were brand new, they were relatively affordable. These prices are not exact, but in 1989, an F-150 like this started around 12 to 13,000 bucks. Uh, F-350 one-ton heavy-duty truck like this started closer around 15,000 and with a few options, of course, you can lift those prices up a little bit, but once again, simplicity, value, and longevity as you see with these two trucks. Guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. And of course, go back to tfltruck.com where we have all the information about these trucks and you can also learn exactly when we're gonna be either auctioning off this truck for charity or obviously selling it for charity. Thank you very much and thanks, guys.